So some of you may or may not be aware of the fact that we're about to go ahead and start our Dragon Age Origins run. Cool. And this is the announcement video for that. Cool. But that's not why you're here, is it? Let's, let's be very honest with ourselves. The reason you are here is because you want my no-spoiler review for Baldur's Gate 3. So we're going to start with the simplest, least information version, and then we'll add a few layers as we go. Sound good? Super, super simple version. Wait a year. The game is feature incomplete, buggy, and frankly, a bit of a mess. It lacks polish in almost every respect. However, the core elements of it, the things that, you know, uh, can be patched around and polished around, are really, really good. Even the gameplay, which had the most issues, was still nevertheless something I would consider good, although not as good as Divinity Original Sin 2. So if we ever get a, a definitive edition for Baldur's Gate 3, there's my recommendation. I do not recommend the game in its current state. Now let me go into a few more specific details, because it's easy to say a game is buggy, but let's recount some specific bugs. Let's assume you have a quest where you have to choose to kill Bill or Bob. This is all made up, of course, because this is a no-spoilers review. So you have to pick one of these two people to kill, and when you do, you do the quest for the other person. So during our review, we killed Bob. Immediately after turning in this quest and finishing it, Bob, who I remind you is dead, said, Thank you so much for doing this quest for me. I'm glad you killed Bill. Wonderful job. Fantastic. I got your back, yo. Immediately after this, Bill said, Thank you for killing Bob. Appreciate you. M you know, much obliged. I'm, I'm so glad that you killed Bob. This actually came up later, too. Both of these triggers were wrong. And I mentioned that specifically because that is the most common type of bug I encountered by far. Trigger bugs. Things where quests wouldn't flag right or would flag, uh, excuse me, wouldn't flag at all or would flag wrong. And that is a non-stop problem in this game, especially when you get into Act 2 and in Act 3. Act 3 was extraordinarily buggy in this regard. Some quests wouldn't fire, some quests wouldn't fire at the right time, some quests we had to find workarounds for. Uh, we actually did run into only one game-breaking bug, which we were fortunately able to to find a way around, because otherwise we were screwed. It was a game-breaker, that's why we call them that. But my point here being, not a great showing. Oh, by the way, that game-breaker was back in Act 2. Second overall problem, lack of polish. The game is extraordinarily unoptimized. I have a bit of a Doom machine. It's not uh, like what you'd call a modern Doom machine because it's a couple years out of date at this point, but I still call it the nuclear submarine for a reason. And yet this game had so many performance dips and issues, especially in Act 3, that it got to the point of aggravation. When the loads started taking over a minute to load, when conversations would stall for a solid 10 seconds before they would actually fire, it just drags on. The whole thing, the whole experience, this is a very long game, of course, and that's fine, but it doesn't need to be because if these things were polished out and optimized, then you would chop out literal hours out of the game. I have a term, which some of you may or may not have heard of because I talk about it more on my streaming side of things. It's called seconds in minutes. It's when every minute has a couple of seconds of unnecessary padding. This is very, very common in game design. Anytime you go to loot something and it takes an extra a second to do the animation rather than just looting them, that's seconds and minutes. Uh, and to use a random example, in this case, the 10 second pause. Think about how many conversations are in a typical CRPG. Think about every time you fire up those conversations, there's a good several second pause, up to 10 seconds, where it's just waiting for the conversation to load. And then, hang on, occasionally during the conversation, someone will say something, and it's clearly the time where you can now pick your dialogue choices, but they don't pop up. Instead, there's a several second pause as it's like loading the dialogue options or whatever the heck is actually happening. And this is constant and gets worse the longer the game goes on. Like I said, it was an escalating issue. Um, I will also mention I did have a memory leak issue and had to restart the game roughly once every shift, so about every four hours, in order to you know, make the game playable. And then there's the other issues, which I'm not going to get into. Like I said, we're stay staying firmly in the realm of the no spoilers, but you could see why this is aggravating, because it leads to the biggest problem this game has by far, padding. Now, most of the padding issues can be worked around. There are things that could be patched in to fix this. But the aforementioned seconds and minutes, 
is everywhere. Inventory management, party management, um, accessing the camp, accessing the cutscenes, uh, loading into a new zone, moving to a new location, watching the enemy do their actions during a fight. Another common, uh, I believe it is a bug, thing which would happen is an enemy, it would be an enemy's turn, and they just sit there for a really long time, a good 20 or so seconds, just sit there doing nothing. And then they'd finally decide to take their action. I do think with optimization and a few quality of life features, all of these things could be, you know, most of these things could be smoothed over. An option to skip the animations or skip the enemy turn during the turn-based combat would be very helpful and would trim out literal hours out of the game. Um, as an option, of course, toggles, you know me, I'm all favorite, favorite player options. Um, the option to uh, just adjust the party without having to go to the camp let me, let me walk you through this. This is how you change party members. You hit go to camp, assuming you can wherever you are. You go walk over to the person you want to talk to. Well, first you have to kind of find them. Then you, so you find where the person is because the camp's change. You go walk over to the person and you say, Hey, get out of my party because it's the person you're getting out of your party because you have a party camp before. And then they say, Are you sure? And then you say yes. Then you go walk over to the other person you actually want in your party and say, Hey, Join my party. And they say, yes, now they're in your party. Then you leave camp. And all of that sounds like a minor thing, and that's because it is. It is seconds, but it is seconds and minutes, and you have to do it for any party interaction uh, with regards to adjusting the party, which also means if you left any inventory on someone else, you have to do that to access their inventory, too. These are the kind of things that can be patched out. In fact, these are the kind of things that can be modded out and already have been, I feel like pointing out. Um... They've talked about adding mod support. They've talked about adding the console command back in. Like, the console's in the game. We, we managed to get access to it for a couple of uh, irritations we ran into. I mentioned that earlier. So, there are, there are ways that this game is going to be a whole lot better later than now. And I know what you're thinking. Lore, we don't care about the gameplay. Nobody cares about gameplay, Lore. You're the only one in the world! Okay, fine. You want to hear about the story, but it's hard to talk about story from a narrative perspective. <laughs> <laughs> from a from a non-spoilers perspective, right? I just realized the song ended. I'm sorry. I have to manually restart it. I apologize. You like the song choice, by the way? You recognize the song choice? So, story. With no spoilers. Plot? Very stupid. To the point where I actually think it's bad and is a negative. Um, the thing is, and I, I have a theory here. Wizards of the Coast is terrible. And Hasbro is terrible. We all know this. So... What I think happened was Larian realized that this was their one shot, their one chance to make a Forgotten Realms game. So they did everything. And it shows. Most games like this, which have side arcs or multiple plot threads going at the same time, either weave them in together or have like a central pillar for a given plot arc. Not this game. This game just bounces around. I call it the ping pong plot because you just bounce around randomly between at least three or four main plots and a whole lot more primary plots beyond that. And there's no cohesion to it, and it's just, it's not this game's strong suit is what I'm trying to say. But that's okay, because most people don't play video games for strong plot. I know that sounds strange, but remember, plot is different from story. Plot is merely one of the points on the overall axis of story. So, how's the story other than the plot? Very, very good. Very good world building, uh, very good characterization. I think it nails character. I think it's probably one of the best character games I've seen. I'd say second or third best RPG I've seen when it comes to characterization. Very, very good stuff on that axis. There are some very bad characters, I, sh I should mention. There are some characters which are clearly badly written and badly presented. But for the most part, very good on characterization. I will also say, and this is a question I got very frequently during the stream, do you need to be familiar with Forgotten Realms or the previous two Baldur's Gate games in order to play this game? Absolutely not. In fact, and this is still not a spoiler, kind of. This is, We're drifting into spoilers, so if you want to cut off, this is a good time to do it. Hang on, we'll pause here for a second. Pull up the... No, not this. Oh, God. Oh, God, it's combat time. I'm ready. Uh, <clears throat> let's move down to the docks. Yeah, that was, a, that was a good pause for you to pause out for spoilers. So. It is a rare hat trick to make a story that is accessible for old fans and new fans equally. But this one manages it. There's a huge amount of foreshadowing and build-up for things that 
are reveals if you aren't aware of the setting, if you aren't aware of the previous games. For me, who I've done a lore run of Forgotten Realms, I was spotting all this stuff from a mile away, but not in a bad way, in a properly foreshadowed way. Something would happen and I'd be like, oh my god. And people in chat would be like, what, what? And I'm like, uh, I'll explain later. And I was right, because they were building up to that properly. But of course, if you're not familiar with it, then you're just like, oh, okay. Do, 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 do. And then the, the moment hits and it's like, oh my god. And it's hard to, harder to pull it off than it, th than it sounds. So huge props to Larian for managing to make this game accessible to old fans and new equally. Huge props on that. But you can see why I mentioned this in spoilers, because by sheer virtue of saying this, you now know that there are reveals and moments and things like that, blah, 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 blah. I could probably keep going. I'm not going to. I gotta get ready for Dragon Age after all. I haven't even had breakfast. <laughs> so I woke up a bit late because I'm tired. But I think that's about it. Uh, if anybody wants to ask any non-spoilery questions in the comments, I will be, as I always do, reading the comments and answering them. Uh, well, not the answering part. I usually don't answer comments, but I always read them. So uh, feel free to. Otherwise, I'll see you there. Pumpernickel.